Is it possible, I mean really possible, for you or me to make a difference in our world? The early followers of Jesus probably had the same question. Jesus collected a small band of fishermen, tax collectors, touters, and deniers, and after three years told them to go and proclaim the good news of God's love to all nations. A movement was birthed through these unlikely men and women, and the world would never be the same. History would mark its calendars before and after the entry of this king to establish his kingdom. Jesus sent these uneducated and inarticulate men and women into a hostile world, and it was said of them that they turned the world upside down. But how? They prayed. Then 3,000 people came to Christ. They prayed again. Then they boldly proclaimed the gospel and the church multiplied. They prayed more, and a worldwide missionary movement was birthed. You must understand, they tapped into the heart of God and were baptized with His love and a supernatural power. But what about you and me? Has the world changed too much for us to make a difference? God's love and power haven't changed. When we begin to pray according to the things that are on His heart, He will do extraordinary things. One year before the Soviet Union collapsed, I was invited to preach in historic meetings in the Soviet Republic of Moldova. The invitation itself was a miracle. Followers of Jesus had prayed for that day. Their hearts were melted by the heart of God for their people. Belsi was the first city where I preached. The city council had opposed the meeting, but parliament overrode their decision. When I arrived, the air was filled with tension. With no explanation, a bottle of water exploded on the platform. As I quoted the Bible saying, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the electricity went out. Thousands who had been taught atheism all their lives waited patiently. Finally, the sound system worked. As I concluded, I invited people to place their faith in Jesus. I asked them to join me at the platform and told them I would pray with them. No one came. I didn't know what to do. I invited them again. Then one poor peasant woman came all by herself holding a flower. When she arrived at the platform, she handed me the flower and then knelt and prayed. When she prayed, all of heaven was opened. An explosion of love erupted in that stadium at that very moment. Hundreds of people who had been taught all their lives that there is no God made their way to the platform. I prayed with more than 2,000 people who became followers of Jesus. When I returned to the United States, I shared the story about this poor but courageous peasant woman who impacted a stadium filled with people longing to know if God exists. My wife meets weekly with a group of women who had prayed for our meetings in Soviet Moldova. One of them called me and wanted to come by my office. There was something important that I needed to see. She brought her prayer journal with her, and as I read how she had prayed, my heart wept with tears of praise. You see, God gave this lady a vision for a poor peasant woman in Moldova. She prayed consistently that this poor woman would have the courage to do whatever God told her. Incredible. One woman in the United States prayed, and God touched a peasant woman in Moldova. One peasant woman in Soviet Moldova prayed, and the lives of thousands were changed. When we pray about the things that are on God's heart, there is no limit to what He will do. When we pray for His kingdom to come, His reign in the hearts of people, it will be done. Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed, be your name, your kingdom come.